Philosopher Stoner 666 here. I'm at work again. You see my st stylish vest. You're just mad because I'm styling on you. Uh, I'm just mad because I'm styling on you. Look at this fucking ugly crap. <laughs> what I gotta wear. So yeah, we'll have to make a little, another whiny fucking video. Um, I'm gonna call it something like the cult of feelings. So my main point, to get it out of the way before I ramble on, skip all the preambles to my main point, is that I believe we live in a world that's operating according to the cult of feelings. Now let me explain. Um, human beings, mostly women, but men as well too, uh, especially in the West, modern society with all of its affluence and technology and uh, reproductive control, we're making decisions, and again, it's a feminine tendency, we're making decisions based on feelings and emotions, and what are those? Temporary. Well, like everything in life, strictly temporary, right? Everything is temporary, but we have no rational social engineering anymore. We have no and some people would call it fascism or communism, but no third-party intervention into anything anymore. All these crumbling institutions and crumbling relationships and the death of a family unit. You know, I don't ever believe there was a happy family, but there were structures and stuff in place that everybody had a role to play. And sure, there's always been dysfunction in human history. There's never been a completely 100% functional society, but workable. And certainly uh, traditions and systems and ways of doing things that worked for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And what we've been doing the past, say, 50 years, our experiment, we see all the dysfunction and chaos and social decay around us. And I think it's something that should give us pause. So yes, the cult of feelings. Yes, indeed, the cult of feelings. So... Here's the uh, whiny story. Um, Antinatalism community on Facebook. And yeah, we all know Facebook is kind of a fucking jerk off, right? It's the lowest form of friendship and it really doesn't matter and it really doesn't mean anything, but, but yeah. So I'm involved in some Facebook groups and stuff, right? And I know this couple. I'm not naming any fucking names here. You can figure it out for yourself. There's not many of us if you're involved in these groups. They're a couple. They've been having some issues. I'm friends with the woman in this couple, and uh, we sort of agreed a couple of weeks ago to do a project together, um, like an erotica site and stuff, and uh, I was gonna sell some of my art, and she was gonna sell some of her art, and she's doing like an art project thing and some other projects and stuff, and uh, we have communication issues, right? And I noticed this is a tendency, it's millennials, but it's everybody. We're all rude and obnoxious. We don't communicate properly and we don't respond to messages. You know, and I take exception to that. I paid for the domain in this website and I footed the bill for it, no problem. I kind of felt I owed her a favor and I felt, felt, I felt sorry for her. Again, without going into long, gory details about it, this woman had a hard life. Significantly, substantially harder than my life. And yeah, legit, I felt sorry for her. And yeah, sure, as well, as a, a added bonus, She's good looking, sure, sure. But I had no desire to get into her pants or have a relationship with her. She's screwed up and mentally I'm screwed up as well too. I've never really shown it in my videos, but I'm a miserable cantankerous bastard. If you haven't gleaned that much, well, I don't know. But yeah, I got a lot of anger and problems. I don't have any friends really. And now I thought I had at least a couple and I don't have those anymore either. So it's obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna fess up and say yeah it's me that's the problem to a degree here but but still so right so I noticed no response to my message following up about maybe making a Facebook group related to this website and uh, no response though I log in and see on my feed she's posting memes and she's posting lengthy comments and posting all this other shit no response and again I don't expect a response five minutes later. And I had the same issue with her boyfriend. I don't expect an immediate response, but in you know, 24 hours, I think, or 48 hours, sure. Or at least a little, like, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm, shit, I'm busy now. Sorry, well, I'm busy now. 
you know, I'll get back to you later. Sure, sure, I'll get back to you later. Something like that. I think that's totally reasonable and nope. But she claims that she has anxiety and she has all, all these issues and fair enough mental health problems and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd like to see some of her other friends there uh, online, the clowns and stuff on the internet, um, uh, put their money where their mouth is and help her do that. You know, buy her a website. You know, how many people on the internet do you know that really do anything for you? Not many, right? And so again, I think I'm entitled to a modicum of respect. And you know, maybe I'm too needy. That's, that's another facet too, but, but yeah. So I, I sort of called her out on it again. I called her out on it a couple of times before and uh, yeah, she got fed up, I guess, and snapped and uh, sent me a flurry of messages and then blocked me. So yeah, we're not friends anymore. So, you know, whatever. And so that's not a total loss. I'm gonna uh, change the domain name on the website to this real estate project thing that I'm working on. I was gonna have to buy another domain anyway. And you know, the domain is only like $100 plus this custom email and stuff. I can, I can change all that, no problem. Not a huge big deal, but still, people ultimately disappoint. And so a lesson to be learned here and I've, I've had this with other friends too, this communication issue. I kind of like Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect, you know? And no, I don't get any fucking respect out of people, you know? I think uh, some, a gesture like that, forking out 200 bucks to pay for the software on this website and this shit would entitle me to a, a degree of it, and I guess not. But hey, she, this person, yeah, she's fucked up, and ultimately I give her a pass and I wish her well. I sent her a lengthy email sort of outlining how I feel and, you know, whatever. Like I said, it's, it's not, a, not a terribly big deal, but yeah, another friend that I don't have. And, you know, she sort of impressed me because... At one point in time, about a year ago, she wrote me a reference letter to help me get a job. And she didn't really know me. We hadn't even really met. And she did that, and she expected nothing in return. And again, I sort of felt I owed her. But yeah, we're all sort of neurotic and dysfunctional and weird in the antinatalism community, and it just wasn't meant to be. And sort of saying that I give her anxiety and stuff. Well, if I give her anxiety and stuff, that's not healthy. That's not good. She don't need to be bothered by me, and I don't need to be bothered by her. But it's just like everything in this life. It just, shit doesn't work out. I got this feeling like, you know, shit ain't going anywhere, and it ain't working out. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm even thinking back when I grew up. I grew up around a lot of old people and stuff, and I've seen a lot of lives play out, and we all kind of, yeah, we wind up all alone. Like, I, I've been talking to people, like, they're talking about friends that they've had from eight years ago. I got no friends from eight years ago. I got no friends from five years ago or a year ago or fuck even three months ago or fuck it. Just right now, no friends from a week ago. And it makes me not see the value in people anymore. I'm fed up to my fucking eyeballs. And that's why there, there's, there's a, a change in my personality compared to my past videos that I'm seeing and that my personality, uh, before I was emo whining and now there's like an anger and more of an intensity about me. It's still, you could package it as emo whining perhaps, but uh, yeah, I always used to get out of people's way when I'm walking on the street. I don't get out of the way anymore. And I notice... I'm not scary or intimidating, but there's an intensity about me. People get out of my way, and I don't know what it is, and auras, and, and vibes, and presences. I don't know if you know what I mean. I don't mean it in a um, flaky, um, spiritual way or anything like that. Like, it's not a, I don't mean it in any kind of myst mysticism sort of way, but yeah, auras and vibes. So I perhaps give off an aura of intensity, and there's something wrong with me. It's, I've had a lot of disappointments, but I've also been quite fortunate. I've traveled, done all, did all sorts of volunteering travel programs, government grant programs. I've been all over my country. I, I traveled in, in, in Asia. I've had a pretty good life compared to most people's lives. I don't deny that, but at the end of the day here, it's, and it's, again, it's on me. I don't have any friends. I don't have a girlfriend anymore. I don't have anything. And uh, I've done stuff for people and I ex I've expected validation and appreciation through the other. And that's impossible. We all, got, we all got our issues up here that expecting validation from other people, nah. 
any sort of projects, keep them to your own personal projects and do it yourself. That's the moral of the story at the end of the day is do everything yourself and have your own projects and your own things and don't be partnering up with people and doing this and expecting that and you know people are just a big fucking letdown. It's like even like I might have mentioned in another video, I don't see I don't even fucking remember, but trying to get roofers, right? And stuff to do some roofing work on my dad's house. I've had to call up dozens. We've had a couple of people show up and do estimates, but you know, people don't show up, people cancel, people change the estimate, and the shit's not getting done because of all this crap. Everybody's fucking rude and obnoxious and doesn't have any etiquette or standards anymore. And so we sort of see why this, there's something going on with like a kind of social decay. I can't quite put my fingers on uh, what it is exactly, but yeah, you know. I suppose, again, I gotta take a certain amount of responsibility. There's certainly, I would, I would appreciate a notion that, yeah, everything in your life is your own fault. I can see that. I can see that after a certain age, after say the age of 16, when you have agency, it's sort of everything's on you and we get thrown into this world that's a chaotic mess and, you know, we're all sort of reading the script that's thrown in front of us and playing the hand we're dealt, but it is ultimately on us and I guess I fucked up and I'm, I'm just, there's something neurotic and weird about me that I don't attract the best people into my life and, but I try to be somewhat decent and perhaps maybe I'm doing it too much in a quid pro quo way, right, it's a very transactional sense, but yeah, it's all very disappointing. It's made me very upset today and it's a, it, and it, 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 it sort of shows that, like, we, that this person that I've, I've been ranting about, we agree ideologically on a lot of stuff, not everything, but especially the whole anti-natalism thing, and we can't even get along for longer than five minutes. So what hope in hell does anti-natalism have of, of ever becoming, like, a, a serious uh, movement, if you will, taking that seriously? I mean, it has been. You know, David Benatar did a debate with Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris. It's obviously in the, the zeitgeist. But humans, human all too human, right? And, uh, yeah, human all too human. We are only human. We have a, a rational side and an irrational side, a baser animal nature. And, uh, yeah, I guess, like, even, you know... Uh, yeah, women too, especially. Yeah, men too. Men are all, yeah, we're disgusting pigs. But uh, women are flaky. Women are innately dynamic and their moods and feelings are constantly changing. And so our culture is feminized, but perhaps to an extreme where that's why things maybe are so erratic. Um, women are constantly in a state of change and I really feel sorry for them. Again, I wouldn't want to be a woman. I'm not even saying this in a sense because I'm not a feminist, but... Yeah, it's all unfortunate. And I know you fucking people here on the internet don't give a shit, but this is like my journal. I keep a daily -o journal log, but, uh, yeah, I do this. I haven't really kept up on this channel, and I'm not a very good uh, <coughs> advocate for anything, uh, whatever. Not a very good advocate for antinatalism, but it's at least this woman knows she's screwed up, and I know at some level I'm neurotic and screwed up, and I will not pass on this curse to anybody. I don't want to make more me. Yeah. No. I'm sort of saying that, uh, yeah, my uncle could have molested me. He's in the homosexual world. He's what's referred to as a bear. Wait, I didn't even... I didn't even care anymore, Pian. I'm not even making any sense. What the fuck did I just say there? Oh, oh I'm... So tired. So, so very tired. So weary. Yeah. Now, what was I saying there? But yeah. Yeah, my uncle's a piece of shit. I'm just thinking about him, too. I know all sorts of stuff about my extended family and people, and I, I just feel totally alone. Yep. Totally alone. 
I don't care about anybody or anything anymore. <laughs> People commented on this woman's picture on Facebook that your eyes are dead on the inside, and yeah, they are, and yeah, maybe mine are as well, too. The mask of sanity that I wear. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy, huh? Yeah, fucking creepy, weird videos. You goddamn it, William. You just posed a bunch of stupid fucking shit videos on the internet. Talking about a bunch of weird stuff. Why are you so fucking negative? Why are you so weird, huh? Why are you? Hmm? Aren't you? Aren't you weird? Aren't you tired of being weird? No, I'm not. I love vaping. Oh man, look at that. I am empty. Guess I better fill up my tank. <coughs> I'm getting a lot better at doing the dragon. Through the nose first, through the mouth. <laughs> I got sinusy problems. I'm damaging myself and I don't care. It's this'll I'll live a little bit longer vaping as opposed to smoking, but not much longer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Yeah. Yeah, fucking piece of shit video. I'll just add it to the garbage heap. Everybody and everything gets thrown away. All, all, it's like these days, I don't know what it is, but it's, like I said before, with the whole friend situation, which is obviously, again, on me, but it's also on these other people. It's like everybody and everything these days is throwaway. It's all a big fucking, big jerkity jerk-off. Uh, there's no necessity in anything anymore, and by necessity, I mean survival, right? You could have a relationship with someone and you can dissect these relationships to be some form of dependency and eliminate the dependency, whatever the dependency is, be it uh, financial or otherwise, and they go kaput. And meh, everything's throw away, man. Meh. So, whatever. Philosopher Stoner 666 out.